Hello, <laughs> welcome back to the land of Kakiak. It's planning day. It's Thursday night. Boys are at Taekwondo. My husband's gonna pick them up. I am planning. As you see, I already got a jump start on it. Not a lot has changed. This is for my sixth grader. I have something new in the writing column that I thought I would show you guys. So we're still working our way through the Psalms. He's still working in his Saxon faithfully. He is going to start a new book. He's going back to reading his Tom Swift and his Submarine um, next week. He should be onto that by Tuesday. Um, I just went ahead and planned our science lessons already. I think I showed you last week in our planning video how I was planning for our ocean anatomy unit. And I've got our activities in. What is new is writing and rhetoric. So he finished his Evan Moore um, story writing. And that, he finished that really fast. So this is new to me, uh, writing and rhetoric. I haven't had... I mean, we haven't done any of the previous ones, but this is book three and I was looking online and I saw some mom on there said, you know, she was starting, she wasn't starting at the beginning of the program. She had an older student too, a sixth grader, and she started um, them in book three and that it was perfect. It was a perfect place to start. So if maybe if you're interested in writing uh, and rhetoric, but you know, you have a middle school aged kid. Um, maybe that's a good tip for you too, if you're interested. Anyway, so today I was just taking a look. So I've got the teacher edition. Of course I bought these used, so I got them pretty reasonably priced. I don't remember exactly what I paid. I also just bought today the MP3s from, yeah, Classical Academic Press. So I bought the MP3 files, actually I like mentioned it on the back. And I think with taxes, it was like 850 or something. And they have a really nice reader. And I only listened to lesson one, but you can turn it on and they will ha they can read. I, th I was thinking it was gonna read mostly the, um, the sample writings, you know? But it read the whole lesson. I read the whole thing. So I am going to uh, save my voice and let that little reader. <laughs> It sounded super nice. Wait here, maybe I'll I'll play it for you and see if it uh, picks it up on camera. What makes a story a story? People love stories, don't they? They love it when the movie theater grows dark, or the curtain goes up at the theater, or when they turn the first page of a book. Okay. Anyway, so I really liked the reader's voice, and um, so that might be a way that I can cut myself out the guidance on how to use this a typical teaching week so they only give you four days three or four days of work um now we are you know rc based so we have a six day learning week and i'll show you how i play so i'll just show you how i worked with that i also think that since this is you know probably going to be a fairly easy book for him um we're probably able just to go through this one a little faster. So I'm not too worried about it, but the guidance was day one, the teacher models fluency by reading the text aloud while students follow along silently. Student breaks off into pairs and reread the text to each other. Um, tell it back, so narration and talk about it. These are sections in the book. Should happen immediately afterward and then go deeper. So it'd all be done on day one. I'll show you what that looks like. So for lesson one, so this was his lesson one. So he would, <clears throat> I I'm just gonna turn on that MP3 and let it read through this lesson part while he just follows along with his eyes. It's like reading, reading, reading. It's going through all the stuff. What is, what is plot, what are characters? I think it defines rhetoric. It defines um, narration for them. And then it gets to this part. Tell it back. So it asks a question. It says, explain why it's important to be able to tell stories. So, I mean, you could have your child just write that because I'm, you know, I'm always trying to make things uh, more independent. Um, but I think for this week, I'll, I'm actually maybe going to do this whole lesson with him and have him just maybe orally tell me back because I want to just kind of see where he is and make sure he's understanding the instructions before I let him just go on his own. 
Um, I'll check back with you during pl- next, maybe next planning time and tell you how it went. And then what are the two central aspects that make a story? So he's going to have to recall from the reading, right? And I guess if he didn't remember, he could look back. Um, talk about it. So it's like maybe more discussion questions. I think we, I'm just going to talk through that with him and then go deeper. Um, and this one, they give the instruction. They want you to read this, these little excerpts from pieces of writing and then t- uh, label them beginning, middle, and end because they're like out of order. So that's something I think he could just do on his own. And he could just maybe write that. I'm going to just give him his writing notebook. He has a little writing notebook, uh, like a lined book. And I think I'm just going to let him um, do that like an assignment in his book. And then I'll just check it. And then there's a couple more like that. I feel like the first day, they like really load up on the first day of all these. And they want you to say, read something and say if it's a narration or not a narration. They're trying to get them, obviously, to understand what a narration is. And that's what this one is. This is narrative book. This is narrative two, their second level of narration. There's, yeah, passages. Remember the narrative timeline. Yeah, here's more passages. And then that would be the end of day one. So that's a lot of stuff. See all my little checkoff marks? So I've got model reading and student reading. Well, that's just going to happen at the same time. Tell it back, talk about it, and go deeper. Those are three sections that he could do either in his notebook or, but like I said, I think I'm just going to have him do that orally with me this week just to check for comprehension. And then day two, they're supposed to do the writing time section. So in, I just copy, I just copy down whatever they had in the writing time section. So the next day, copy work is actually just a sentence. So he, again, he can do that in his notebook. And then there's dictation. Um, so I will be reading this. So I have everything that's in his book in my teacher's edition, right? So I can be, we can be reading along together. So that's really helpful. And again, I'd have him just dictate that into his notebook and then, um, I would kind of check it for him. And then summary, it says write a summary narrative of one of your favorite stories. It can be as simple as beginning, middle and end, or you can elaborate further, write it in complete sentences, tell the name of the story as well as the major events and characters. Right. So that would be day two. And then day three was the speak it section. So this is all still lesson one, right? Here's speak it. Um, Memorization is an important way to strengthen your brain and to add to its store of knowledge, memorize your summary of the story you chose in the writing time. So you'd memorize his own summary here and share it with the class or with your mom. (laughs) Um, Consider adding excitement and changing the volume. They've got notes on elocution, so that's nice. I think I will take the time, on this, especially on this first week, to we can read that together. It, um, I think it is probably in that MP3, so I probably don't even have to read it. I could just play the MP3 and have us both silently read along. And then um, they had some notes on um, the Speak It, so... They would uh, read their work, right, or memorize it, and they said, and record it. So I'll probably just use my phone. I'll record it, um, so and then have him listen to it back, and then take notes on his. Um, in this case, I think it was the, his summary that he was working on. And if he hears anything when he listens to it back, um, that he could improve. I'm just gonna have him make little notes to himself on that summary, and um, so that that's really like all that they had for me to do this week, right? So I decided that the next day, that was only three days worth, to do a rewrite day. So I'm just going to have him rewrite that summary with the notes that he took after he listened to himself back. And then I'm going to have him use my own editing bookmark um, that I use. We use, I'll show you. I have a paragraph writing and editing bookmark that I made. And... um, you know, I've shared these a bunch of times, but they're free in my store. And so I think I'll just have him go through a summary and just check, you know, proofread his own stuff. And then um, I may have him go, you know, what is the subject of your paragraph? I might add that one on. This is actually, I pulled this out of um, Williams. Um, I pulled this out of William's writing book because it was closer. So I don't have William, who's in second grade, do all of them. I just have him do this part right now <laughs> for grammar. But Everett can go through everything on here. So yeah, I have 
So I'm gonna start this this week, right? And so then that would be pretty much all I have for me for lesson one. So then since we have six days, I have two more days, I just scheduled in free write and edit, and then I'll give him feedback. Free write, edit, and I'll give feedback. So I'll just have him continue on in his little writer's um, notebook. He can write anything he wants, you know, for those two days right now. He really enjoyed the story writing unit we just did from Evan Moore. So he may want to continue. He's been actually really liking working on my computer. He loves typing them up and adding in all types of little graphics and, and, and doing fun fonts and borders and stuff. <laughs> it's really cute. But um, so I think he might choose to do something like that for a while and that's completely fine with me I want him I it's really it's really nice to see him enjoying his schoolwork I feel like a lot of times um you can totally tell when kids are really interested like they just come to life you know and some things they're just doing it because they have to right because <laughs> they because you know you're like required that they learn something but for him I've noticed that his when he's been writing these stories, he is motivated. He, I have to tell him to, that it's time to stop. Like we have to set the timer. So he, because we have to do other things. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was doing some story writing, which is totally fine with me for right now. Um, it gives, he's enjoying it and he's getting work in here. And then I also get to give him a lot of grammar feedback through his writing and spelling kind of correction and stuff. So it might as well be writing that he enjoys, right? I mean, we, we'll, we'll get to essays eventually. We'll get there. Okay, so, yep, that's new to us. And if you're wondering if I'm going to do writing and rhetoric with my younger boys, I think I am. Um, I actually bought some of the earlier books as well. So I'm going to have book one, two, and three. And so I think I'm going to start William, whenever he's done, William is still working through the, um, how to write a story. But, um, of course, Everett just whipped through it. You know, he can do all that really fast. Um, he had the grade, I don't know, three through six or whatever it was, four through six. <clears throat> and William's doing the one to three. So, but I'm going to let him get through this first. Um, so, yep. This week is planned for my sixth grader, and then that would take me to William. Sorry, this is today's. He did do all of this stuff. He went to Taekwondo. Okay, so here we go for next week for William. Um, math, he's still doing a workbook page, um, just flashcards for 10 minutes and a math game with me. We're still working on uh, multiplication. He is still doing his McAfee revised. And then the McAfee original. And I have Mary up revised with the copy work I have for it. Original with that how to write a story. Then he's up to one page. Although I will say when he does his copy work one page, he's kind of getting to where if this was his page, I would have, I would say, yeah, that's fine. That's one page worth. But like if this was his one page, I probably would be like, that's not enough lines, you know? So like the other day, he, this was his copy work and I was like, yeah, you're not going to do one page, just one paragraph, basically. So I had him do both of these and considered that one page. You know what I mean? When he does his copy work, he uses this sentence editing bookmark that I made and his highlighters and he highlights these parts of his copy work. So I put in edit also. And then when he does his how to write a story, editing marks, because I give him feedback. And so he needs this to check it. You can see I give him a lot of feedback when he does the how to write a story. And what I've been having him do, like he wrote this story today, 
and but it's too hard to flip back and forth. So I just have him. He has his little writer's notebook, and I just have him do his supposed to be his his whole thing, and then I give him his final feedback, and then he gets to draw a little story. This was his brainstorming day for this story. Um, I said, what happened to Will's teeth? That was like kind of the prompt. And he drew it out in pictures to brainstorm, which I thought was really funny. This is a dentist pulling teeth out. It's, not, it's like hilarious. The dentist is like climbing up on the, on the dentist chair. <laughs> anyway, he's so funny. He called my mom today and read this story to her. It was pretty cute. I'm just looking what he's doing next. And like, I'm not doing all the, all kind of the um, instructional part. You know, I don't do it like a bunch of stuff on the board and stuff like that. Like how these are kind of talking as if they're being used. But we just kind of, I kind of read it together with them and, and give them some guidance on how to get started. And we just do really small sections at a time. So this next prompt for this next story, it's already named for him, is called A Giant. And it's just a one, two, three outline. It says character and setting. And we've talked about what are characters, what are setting, he knows. And it says, what does the giant look like? Where does the story happen? And so he's just supposed to write that information in here. That's sometimes when we get this one, two, three outline, that's when I go, I give him, before he writes anything, I'd say, let's do like, you know, like what he did. Let's do a brainstorm page. So I'll probably do the same thing here for him. I would just write in something like, you know, brainstorm, it's for it's a giant, right? And I want to do, big, you know, a one, two, three outline. So one, two, I didn't do very even boxes, did I? Three. <laughs> but he can just draw pictures in there to kind of get his thoughts out on paper. And then we could maybe like have him jot down some words, you know, to use. And then he could write that in here. So this has got a lot of activity things back here. Start with the picture. So they give them different ways to prompt them. Anyways, I think these are good for, like what I was doing with Everett now that I'm letting him free write. I, I think these are helpful because kids all the time, like they don't know how to free write. Like they don't know where to start. If you go straight from copy work to, okay, write me essays or write me whatever. I think that could be very jarring and intimidating. And you only have to do maybe one of these a year or so. I think that's all I put in my sequence. It gives them something to get the ball rolling, you know? That's his how to write a story. And he does the same editing of his own writing. Each, I mean, literally each day. I want him checking his own work, proofreading his own sentences. And then when he's uh, writing a story, he, you know, uses the paragraph writing one too. Okay, so I always write in edits. I want to make sure that that's like another step that they do that they don't. If I, I, if I just write copy work or just write how to write a story, even with my older son, they won't edit. They won't go back and check their work <laughs> unless I make it a line item for them to put in their planner. Oh yeah, I always ask them. So he's gonna do his revised and then my son, I'm asking him to give me a summary, right? just a beginning, middle, end summary. He'll read his original reader on this day and I'm gonna ask him what's it about, right? I want him, I want him to know what's, what's the main topic, what's like the big takeaway, right? Then I just use my bookmark comprehension questions. That's the day he asks me questions about what he read. So for writing, we've been doing, usually I'd have him be doing our weekly spelling packets, but right now we are doing spelling boot camp. And I'll kind of give you a little sneak peek of what it's kind of looking like so far. When I get like my whole program put together, I'll share it with you guys. I'm going, I'm like testing it out on the kids right now. So I did just make I put these up for sale. I made flashcards, spelling rule, and um, like definition flashcards. So there's just kind of some spelling terms that are helpful to know, like syllable. I know I, I put them in cursive in the front, but I did put things in print on the back. So let's read, oh, just rule number 19. I and O may say I and O when placed before two consonants, like in gold, mild, told, and bind. It's rule 19. I wanted flashcards that went along with spell to write and read, but you can't like they're they're there's nowhere to be found, literally nowhere. Um, I didn't want to do like their full on. I don't know if I want to do their full on program, but 
I got. Spell to write and read. Um, the teacher's manual. So I've been reading this for a couple weeks now. Um, I'm trying to kind of understanding it. And so I looked at all their spelling rules and, the, and I also looked through the logic of English spelling rules. And then they, I had a bunch of other influences, but I kind of put together um, those, but I, I did number them the numbered ones so that they would basically match up with the numbered um, rules in spell to write and read so that I could use them with this. Um, if I, you know, if I ever need to refer to this, if I was using something out of here and it referred me to a spelling rule, I just wanted to be in sync with that. I'll link those down below. They're only five bucks. Anyway, so I printed these out for the kids. So they've been using these and as I teach them, I'm giving them kind of like a lesson every day, not very long. They they get whatever concept we're covering. I give them that flashcard to keep in their spelling folders. So oh, here's my notes. So I just made myself some blank um, spelling boot camps, like day one, this is my day two. I didn't have anything to review that day. I gave myself review, define, something I want to define something for them, examples. I'm gonna give them and talk through some notes and we're gonna do some kind of activity. So just for example, for day one we did, we defined phonogram versus phoneme. And they wrote that in their um, in their note in their note pages. I gave them so this is William's spelling folder. I've got so much stuff in there right now. Right, these are the spelling flashcards that he has used already, and these are the um, phonograms. And these are just I printed off the ones from Alpha Phonics that are free from Don Potter's website. I'll link those down below too. Whenever I get this whole thing together, I'll make a nice neat video on it. But I'm just kind of giving you a sneak preview. So spelling boot camp notes day one. These are Williams. I think I wrote that on there for him. But he defined, and we gave him a really simple phonogram versus phoneme. So he's we said phoneme, he wrote single distinct sound. Phonogram is a spelling of a sound. That was just the easiest, shortest way to have him write it. Anyway, so I have these notes pages for them. And like this is day two, we talked about consonants and practice consonant sounds and consonant blends and stuff. But, um, and then we reviewed on day two, we reviewed the definition of phonogram and phoneme. And then we reviewed, cause the activity from day one was to, we drilled the um, phonograms, made a right pile, wrong pile. So for day two, you're going to write for review the phonogram and phoneme definitions. Um, and then they're gonna go, we went through the wrong pile of their phonograms. And we're just gonna do that every day, go through the wrong pile, cause I wanna get, make sure that they have these all memorized. Cause like the base, you know, the first thing that you have to know about spelling is your phonics. So constants on board. Oh yeah, we talked about some of that stuff. Examples. Okay, we just did that. Okay, notes. We talked a little bit more about how Y has one consonant sound, but three vowel sounds. <clears throat> and so we did this kind of board. We, um, wrote out some words that had some different Y, you know, used to represent different vowel sounds. And then their practice activity was actually from Splendid Spelling. So I got this. This was a free to print. You can buy it for 10 bucks on Amazon if you want to, if you could have the 10 bucks to support Sherry over at Mom Delights. She puts out so much good material for free. I mean, if you want to buy the hard copies, but you know, you can, but she lets people just print so much stuff. I had, I had that. And so I'm just using that where it matches up with what I'm teaching as an activity. So we did um, the blends activity today. So we practiced saying these blends. I mean, a lot of this is review, but that's okay. We actually didn't do the, um, the kind of like assignment part of it just because we had to go to um, Taekwondo. We had to leave <laughs> the house, but I would have had them do this. Anyway, so we'll be doing these if there's something in here that matches up with um, the spelling rule that we're going over and if it makes sense to use it. So both, I printed out two of those, so both the boys have one. So anyway, so you can see how it's going. Um, I need to do some more planning. Let's see, I'm planned through mm, day eight. So I need to do some more planning on that. But yeah, if you guys are interested, if I when I if I finalize this, if you're interested in me typing this up or anything and sharing it, let me know and I will. 
just leave me a comment say yes please share <laughs> okay so then i just need to copy we're not doing history right now okay my second graders planned and then i already did this day i'm just checking off for beauregard I know I did those. So I'm just, I just made a new monthly planner page for him because I'm just sticking to my heavy number day, heavy letter day, and then day C is an assessment day. I'm just sticking with these sheets for now. So I just gave myself a fresh top sheet for him. And next week is planned. I think I'm just going to work a little bit longer tonight on my spelling boot camp days. And I will talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.